Uh, if you would, uh, turn back to the scripture that I just read uh, for you. And I'm just going to reread uh, verse number 25. He said unto them, Where is your faith? And they being afraid, wonder, say one to another. What manner of man is this? For he commanded even the winds and the water, and they obeyed him. Let the church say amen. amen. Turn to somebody looking next to you and help me to announce this uh, topic for today. Say, beloved. beloved. Come on, tell them. Say, beloved. beloved. Don't let your problem, Don't let your problem be, greater be greater than your promise. Turn to somebody else and look at them and say, Beloved, Beloved. Don't, let your problem don't let your problem be greater, be greater than your problem. Now come on, praise God like you believe it. Come on, praise God like you believe it. Don't let your problem be great. My God, that should make you run right there. I, I don't have to say another word, brother. And that ought to make you run right there. Don't let your problem be greater than your promise. Somebody say glory to God. My God today. All of us here uh, today, uh, at some point in time, in some way, uh, Brother Dalton, in some circumstance, all of us here, without exception, turn to somebody and look at them and say, you too. Yeah. Point at them and say, you too. Yeah. All of us here, at one time or another, being thought, have been in a storm. Uh, it has been said, uh, Sister Gloria, that there are one of three postures that we are in at all times. Uh, uh, that we are either approaching the storm, we're either in a storm or we're either coming out. Are you all hearing me today? Uh, we must realize that life is full of storms. Life is full of circumstances. Some of our storms, uh, amen, are in the literal sense. Uh, amen. Some of them, uh, Sister Stacy, are not so literal, but they are spiritual storms that we find. How many of us have been through a spiritual storm lately? Uh, I, I'm, I'm reminded as I was uh, uh, studying uh, Jennifer and as I was praying, the Spirit of God brought back to my remembrance. And some of you might have been in this circumstance. Uh, I do a lot of traveling, uh, sometimes more traveling than uh, even I would like to sometimes. But uh, I was traveling and I was on the airplane. Uh, anybody can shout when you uh, when you understand what I'm saying. Uh, I was on the airplane, Christian, and I was uh, I, I was I was flying, and all of a sudden the pilot announced, uh, "Fasten your seatbelts." Somebody will talk to me. Uh, he said, "Fasten your your seatbelts because we're getting ready to enter into some turbulence." Yeah. And, and, and how many of us have been on the plane and, and all of a sudden the plane starts rocking and reeling? And how many times have you been on the plane and all of a sudden the plane just dropping? And, and you, you stop, am I talking to anybody here today? Well, how many of us know that life doesn't necessarily give you that type of warning? Am I talking to anybody? That, that you don't get an announcement, Minister Mel, that says, Mel, uh, fasten your seatbelt because there's a storm that you're getting ready. Am I talking to anybody here? You're getting ready to go into a storm. And so simply fasten your seatbelt so that when, when, when it seems like you're getting dry, anybody just feel like your life just dropped the bottom, just dropped out of the marriage, bottom dropped out of the family, 
bottom dropped out and you find anybody been in a financial storm lately where you had to wonder, God, how are you going? Am I talking to anybody? Yeah, am I, I, maybe I'm talking to a bunch of rich folks, but I don't, I don't have it like you have it. Every now and then over at 7019, we got to go into the closet and we, we got to pray about some stuff and we got to say, God, I don't know how you going to do it, but I need you to drop. Somebody talk back to me. Every now and then you got to be bold enough to talk to God and say, God, you got to send a blessing my way because I can't see it. I don't know how it's going to work out. I don't know where it's going to come from, but I know that you said you've never seen the righteous forsaken. Somebody should have blessed God right there. How many of us can talk back to God and say, God, you said that you never seen the righteous forsaken, nor my seed begging bread. And I'm here to declare today that we can't let our problems. Somebody don't talk back to me today. I feel like preaching. That we can't let our problems be greater than our promise. How many of us believe there's a promise for your life? Come on, give God a hand, pray. I grew up in the Midwest. I grew up in Nebraska. And in Nebraska, we have extreme weather. We have, we have tornado season. And, and I don't know if anybody's ever been in a tornado, but back when I was growing up, Brother Larry, the tornadoes would come through. And I'm not talking about dust storms. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the stuff that they fantasized uh, Dorothy was looking at. I was looking at the real, the real thing. Turn somebody say it's a real thing. In the Midwest, I was watching the, the tornado destroying houses and, and, and pulling up animals and picking up cars and, and watching it at home. I see you see it go up in the clouds and disappear and you don't know where it's going to come back down. Now, how many of us know life is like that sometimes? You see something right now and then it disappears and then it comes back out of nowhere. But I remember praying. We get my parents tell us get up under the, the table and get up un, un, under the beds and stuff like that. And, and, and I remember uh, my mother say start praying. And how many of us know that prayer will change the storm? Yes, yes, Am I talking to anybody? I said, how many of us know that prayer will change the storm? Yes. And so, so, so sometimes when it, uh, may, maybe it wasn't a tornado, maybe some of us are from down south, and maybe you've been through a hurricane. Maybe, maybe, maybe anybody remember Hurricane Katrina and all the damage it did down in New Orleans and down on the Gulf Coast. And, 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 and I don't know about you, but I was down there after the devastation, and, and I couldn't imagine, Gloria, being in the midst, am I talking to anybody here? I couldn't imagine being in the midst of the storm, Deacon LeGrand, because I was frightened by the aftermath. Just seeing, just seeing complete communities destroyed. I'm talking about just, just fragments and just, just remnants of houses and remnants of buildings that are left. Just whole communities left. I'm not talking about a house here and a house there. That's what I saw in, 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 in the Midwest when I was growing up. You might see a house destroyed or it hit the school and so a portion of the school had to be rebuilt. I'm talking about mother, the whole community was destroyed. Turn to somebody and tell them, God will work like that. God will work like that. Yeah, because I want to take you back just a few weeks. It's still all God. Yes. Turn to somebody and say, it's still all God. Yes. No matter what happens, it's still. Turn to somebody and say, no matter what happens, no happens. It's, still it's still all God. Unemployment. Unemployment. Anybody been unemployed before? Yeah, wondering, wondering, Lord, when, when are you going to bless me with that next job? I'm trying to be faithful. I'm out there knocking on doors. I'm putting in applications. I'm online putting in applications. But these bills are stacking up. My obligations are getting deeper and deeper. But how many of us know that your problem? I'm not talking to anybody. I want to take you back to the point. I don't want you to lose the point. So we can wallow in trouble. So I talk to me. We can get focused, mother. We can get focused on problems and we can lose sight of the truth. The truth is, no matter what the storm looks like, right? the promise is still... Somebody talk back to me. Somebody shout, the promise is still great. The promise is still great. Anybody been addicted? Lord. Hello, somebody. Glory. And, I, and I'm not just talking about crack, heroin. I'm not talking about marijuana. See, some of us have been addicted to men. Yeah. Yeah. Addicted to women. Addicted to a relationship. Yeah. You should have got out of love. Come on, somebody. Talk back to me. Come on, talk back to me. Because I'll walk down your street if you need me to. Come on. How many of us, come on, be real. Addicted to sugar. Won't give up sweets. The doctor told you to stop eating them sweets. You still eat salt. Put the salt. Come on, somebody. I'll, I'll come down this street if I need to. Come on, come on. 
Turn to somebody and say, let it go. Come on, let it go. I'm here to tell you today that no matter what it is, I feel good today, no matter what it is, God said that the problem is not greater than my Somebody talk back to me. If you believe this report, your problem is not greater than your what? Than your promise. Come on, give God a hand pray. In our text uh, this afternoon, in our text, uh, Christ and the disciples had lost out into the Galilean Sea. They were crossing. He had, he had told them he had uh, just finished doing miracles. He took the demons out and he had cast them out uh, right prior to this. And how many of us know that God is never short of miracles? Man? He, he can work a miracle and then turn right around and work another miracle. Yes, he can. Turn somebody tell me he ain't never short. And so, and so, and so he had cast out the demons, evangelists, and then now he had told the, the disciples, he had entered into the boat with them, and he had said, let us cross over to the other side. They were crossing over, and the Bible declares, we just read it, that the storm had risen, and now they came to Christ, Christ went to sleep, they went to wake him up and say, Master, don't you care that we're getting ready to perish? He walked down onto the deck of the ship. Spoke to the winds and the waves, the winds and the waves subsided, and then that, that was it. But before he left, he asked him, he said, where's your faith? Yeah, right. Turn to somebody and ask him, where's your faith? Yeah. The Sea of Galilee is still the scene of fierce storm. Sometimes the waves as high as 20 feet. Jesus' disciples were not frightened without cause. Even though several of them were, watch this, they were expert fishermen and knew how to handle a boat. Their peril and concern was genuine. Yeah. See, how many of us know that when God is working in your life, it don't care what you are expert in, you're still an amateur to God. I wish somebody talked back to you. Let me talk. Let me talk to some of you Bible scholars. You know, because we we can quote the Bible backwards and forwards. But how many of us know that when 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 God is working in your life, He can take the brilliant stuff. I wish somebody talk back to me and make it common. And so the Bible declared that uh, that that they were caught in the midst of a storm. That they were crossing over and they were caught in the middle of a storm. My brothers and sisters, when caught in the storms of life, yes. it is easy to think that God has lost control and that we're at the mercy of the winds of fear. In reality, God is sovereign. He controls the, his, the historian. He controls those who are his. He controls our personal destinies. Yes, Beloved, just as Jesus calmed the waves, the good news is still today yeah. that he is able to calm whatever storms you may be facing today. Yeah. No matter what you're looking at, no matter what you're going through, Maurice, God said, I got it. Yeah. Somebody shout, he got it. Yeah. We have to realize that no matter what we're going through, Stacey, no matter what we've experienced, and the good news is if we just pause long enough, turn to somebody and say, pump your brains. If we stop long enough, then we will realize that it's the same God. Since it's the same God that worked it out before, it's the same God that's going to work it out today. The same God who delivered before is the same God who is able to deliver today. The same God who made provision before is the same. Somebody shout, it's the same God. He said, I changed not. I'm the same yesterday, today, and for anybody happy about this report, I'm trying to bring you good news. This is this not, this not, this, 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 this not a funeral. This is good news. First of all, I said, this is good news. The good news is that your problems, see, many of us came in the door. Watch this. I'm, I'm gonna, now I'm going to just pull the covers off. I'm going to just leave it naked. That's what I'm going to just leave it naked. That's on camera. I'm going to leave it naked. See, a lot of you came through the door heavy. Stuff you're dealing with, yeah. stuff running through your mind, and God said you made it to the safety zone. Yeah. I wish somebody talk back to me. Yeah. 
I just want to have church. If you give me about 10, 15 minutes, I just want to have church. See, we, we have to learn how to celebrate what God is doing and stop focusing on the here and now. Just, he said, enter into his gates. I wish somebody helped me with that. Let me try that again. He said, enter into his gates. I'm going to try it again. So you're not, you're not getting on one accord with it. He said, enter into his gates. We don't go Satan wants you to focus on what you see and hear in the natural. <laughs> Thus attempting to control you with and through your thoughts, your senses, and or your emotions. See, if, if the enemy can move your emotions, he's got you. If he can get in your head, he's got you. If he can get you thinking too much, mother, he got you. Yeah, the Bible declares, watch this. I'm going to just watch it. He said, lean not to your own understanding. But in all your way, that's your word today. I, I can see it all over. He said, lean not to your own understanding, Audrey. He said, in all your ways, acknowledge me, and I'll direct your path. You want to know how to get out of it? He said, don't talk to me today. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Four things. Watch it. Four things. I want you to look, look at in, in a word there. Four things. Your problem is not greater than your problem. Yeah, that's right. yeah. First thing. Watch this. Number one. He's on board. Yeah. 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 That ought to be enough right like there. Ain't that what they say? Back that train to get your, he's on board. Somebody shout, he's on board. Here's the good news. If he's on board, then I don't care what's going on. My God. Uh, anybody hear me today? If he's on board, Mother Harriet, no matter what's going on around me, the word of God declares that if God be for me, is anybody going to celebrate? Then who could be against me? Give me about 10 people who are bold enough to say he's on board. I said, give me 10 people who are bold enough to say he's on board. I don't care what's going on, tell the devil he's on board. I don't care what you don't have today, say he's on board. I don't care what the diagnosis is, tell the devil he's on board. I don't care what he was able to take away in this season. He's on board. Give God a hand praise in here. The Bible declares that if God is for us, he's more than the world against us. Paul said in Romans, he said, listen, as long as I got Jesus, as long as I got the Lord on my side, he said, I was shipwrecked. He said, but God, let me grab a little piece of something and make it a safety. Anybody been shipwrecked by the storms of life? The storm hit you so quick, you didn't have a chance to react, but the, the, the storm broke your ship into pieces, pity, but the Bible declares that if you grab anything, good God Almighty, if you grab anything that belongs to God, I don't care how big or small it is, God will let you make it a safety. Is there anybody here that knows you're going to be safe no matter how it looks right now? Come on, tell your storm right now. I'm safe. I'm in the safety zone. Come on, give God a hand pray. Number two, watch this. I'm going to go quick. Number two, not only is he on board, the second thing 
is that the commandment included us. Yes. All right. Amen. Yes. The commandment, yes. watch this. You got to read the text, dog. Yeah. It, 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 it blew my mind. The commandment yeah. included us. Yes. Jesus told them when they entered into the ship, look at what he said. This, he said, let us cross over yes. to the other side. Yes. That was a commandment. Yes. If it was not a commandment, then it would not a little bit further down say that then they lost out. Yes. In other words, he was telling them what to do, then they responded. Yes. I'm here today to tell you that you ought to be excited yes. that the commandment included us. Yes. Yes. Are you in this? Yes. Any, anybody excited that the commandment included you? Yes. That the commandment included me? Yes. That we're included in what God has planned? The plan, tell somebody, tell them God has a plan for your life. In Hebrews 13 and 5, the Bible records these words. The writer said, he said, I will never leave you. Yes, yes. Anybody, anybody read that? Yes. Have you heard that report? Yes. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Yes. In other words, it doesn't matter where you are in the journey. It doesn't matter what's going on during the journey. Yes. The thing you need to be excited about is not only is he on board, but that the commandment included us. Yes. Turn to somebody telling you too. Yes. See, we ought, to be, we ought to be celebrating God today that if God is speaking to us, the only way that he opened up the door for you to be able to go to, go to school is that the commandment, come on somebody, yes. the commandment included you. Yes. Somebody ought to talk to me. Yes. See, from the time you were a little girl, he said, he said, train up a child in the way that they should go. And that when they get older, they will not depart. See, the promise was spoken, the commandment was spoken, but the commandment included you. And it didn't just include your parents. There are people who have not even met you yet who are appointed from the foundation. Yeah, somebody been talking to me. From the foundation of the world, they were made specifically to pour and to deposit into your life. And God said, now your season has oh, I miss somebody. <laughs> can we learn how to celebrate seasons yeah. in this house? Yeah. It may not be your turn, but can you celebrate somebody yeah. else's season? My yeah. God, I came to celebrate seasons today. So when God said, it is your season. Yeah. And, and in this season, there are people who have been raised up, people who have been equipped, people who have been who have been positioned to pour and deposit yeah. in your life. They never you, but they're waiting in position for you to arrive at that place. I got anybody ready to arrive at your place of destiny? Anybody ready to arrive? Go to somebody and tell them your problem is not greater than your promise. Come on, tell me your problem is not greater than your promise. Give God a hand, break the hand. Number three, watch this, let's go. Number three, watch this, watch this, number three. Not only is he on board, not only does the commandment include us, but number three, this is a reminder. Turn to somebody and say, this is just a reminder. Yeah. Turn to somebody and tell me, this is just a reminder. Yeah. Number three, don't tell God about your storm. Yeah. Yeah. Learn how to tell your storm. The storm arose. I'm getting happy. That's all right. Peter and Bible said that when the storm arose, yeah. Yeah. that they panic. How many times do we get in the midst of a storm in our life and we panic? Yeah. We we just fall to pieces. We just look, we lose sight. Yeah. Watch it. Watch this. Watch it. He told them, "Let us go yeah. to the other side." Yeah. They got in the journey, Marie. The storm arose and they panicked. Yeah. I want to talk to somebody who panicked. Yeah. 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 The Bible said that Jesus was asleep. Yeah. They went down below to wake him up, to tell him something that he already knew yeah. before they even left. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible declared that he knows what we have need of yeah. before we have asked. Yeah. Yeah. Before they ever lost out, he already knew what they were going to need. I wish somebody help me. I'm here to tell somebody who stepped out on faith that before you ever stepped out, 
He already knew what you were going to need along this journey. I want somebody to celebrate with me today. Gloria, before you ever step out, he's been talking to you, he's been asking you, he's been beckoning you, but before you ever stepped out, he said, I already knew what you would need because as soon as you start, a storm was going to rise up. Somebody don't talk back to me. A storm was going to rise. As soon as you step out on faith, Ashley, a storm was going to rise up in your life. And the storm, I said, the storm was not to destroy you, but the storm was to validate who you are. Yes! Yes! Somebody give God praise in here. Somebody give God, somebody give God praise for this rainbow word. Jesus. He said you will suffer great things for his name's sake. Somebody give God a praise in here. Somebody give God a praise in here. Don't tell God about your storm. The Bible declares in Matthew 17 and 20 these words. It says, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place. And the Bible declares that when you speak to the mountain, the mountain has to move. I'm here to tell you that if you just start speaking to your storm and stop running like you're scared talking to God and say, God, don't you care that I'm getting ready? Am I talking to anybody here today? I want to stop this notion that you feel you got to pick up the phone to call somebody or you feel you got to run to the path. I'm here to do my job, but understand, baby, I can't do what God can do. Somebody better talk back to me. I can't do what God can do. We got to learn how to fall on our face. We got to learn how to get down on our knees. We got to get back to tarrying and waiting for God to say something. Am I talking to anybody here today? Is there anybody who knows that prayer still works? And the Bible said that they went to wake God up. They went to wake Jesus up and said, Lord, don't you care that we're getting ready to perish? And Jesus woke up, shook off the sleep, came out onto the deck, looked at the winds and the waves, and said, go sit down someplace. Is there anybody here that remember your day when the Lord showed up and spoke into your situation and told the storm, go sit down someplace. That's my son Larry. Is there anybody here that can give God a praise? And you can remember when it was your day and he said, that's my son Morris. Go sit down someplace. That's my daughter Marie. Go sit down someplace. That's Mother Harriet. She belongs to me. Go sit down someplace. That's my servant Jennifer. Go sit down someplace. Ashley, she belongs to me. Go sit down someplace. Is there anybody here that can give God praise? When you look back over your life and you start to think how you made it over, it was nobody but God who made a way out of no way. He spoke through my storm and the storm had to obey.
last one. Last one. Not only was he on board, not only did the commandment include us, not only does it want you to stop telling him about your storm, but to tell your storms about who he is. The last thing he wanted me to tell you is that the promise was the command. He wanted me to tell you that, that the promise was the command. When he said, let us cross over to the other side, it was not just a command, but it was a promise. I wish somebody hear me today. Turn to somebody ask me, what did he say in the first place? See, see, God should be here. I wish somebody celebrate with me. I'm done. See, he said the promise was the command. So many times, though, God was speaking to our lives, and we would hear what God says, and we would just obey because he's the father and not celebrate the fact that what he said really was a promise. I wish somebody help me today. So many times he will speak into our lives and simply he said, I didn't just tell you what to do. He said, I gave you a promise. He said, when I spoke, let us cross over to the other side. He said, that was not only a command to follow. He said, but that was also a promise to hold on to. He said, because when you launch out and when the storm rises up, you're going to need something to keep you anchored. I wish somebody help me today. I wish somebody help me today. Ashley, I want you to know that God is a miracle worker. The enemy, all we, you witnessed some of it, all week long the enemy tried to rise up and discourage me, but the devil was a liar. That no matter what the enemy tried to do to discourage me, there was already a ram in the bush. He already had you on a, somebody on the kitchen. He already had you on assignment. I didn't even know I was going to need you. But God had you right where I needed you, right in the nick of time. And not only did he let you speak when you needed to speak, but he allowed you to say what you needed to say. And it provided clear passage for the servant of God. Y'all not hear me today. I'm grateful for who you are in my life. Because the promise was in the command. The command was go and find out information. But the promise was in when you find it, that's going to be the solution. Somebody over here me today. My God today. How many of us know that when the answer comes, that the answer is also the solution? Come on, somebody. Jesus said, let us go to the other side. Now, what he was telling them is, we've got to take action on the word. But what he was also telling them is that what I spoke into your life, Penny, is also the anchor that I want you to hold on to when the storm comes. Now, the Bible declares that into each man's life, there will be some storms. But I'm here to tell you that God is able to make a way out of no way. That no matter how the storm looks, no no matter how it feels, no matter what the enemy tries to do to capitalize on what God is doing in your life, let me remind you that it's all God. When the storm comes, it's still God. When the winds blow, it's still God. When the water's rocking you, it's still God. Is there anybody here that knows that if you just follow the waves, that when the waves are rocking, anybody know that when you're in a car and the car and the plane is going back and forth, that if you just rest, good God Almighty. How many of us know that right in the middle of a hurricane, that's why they fly above it. When they want to study the hurricane, they don't fly through the winds, they don't fly through the waves, they rise above the storm and they come down in the middle of the storm. I'm here to declare to somebody, I'm done y'all, that right in the middle of the storm, there's peace that surpasses all understanding. Right in the middle of the storm, there is peace that surpasses all understanding. The Bible declares that when he walked out onto the boat, that he spoke to the wind and the waves. And the Bible said that they subsided, that they stopped. It didn't say that they slowed down. It said immediately 
they stopped. I'm here to tell somebody that as soon as the Lord speaks, it's done. As soon as he says what he's going to say, it's over. Somebody here today, let it go. Stop worrying about it. He's already spoken. Do I have some help in here today? God sent me here to let you know that you got to let it go. you got to put it behind you. He said, I've already spoken. And if I've already spoken, that settles it. Turn to somebody and tell them, God said it. That settles it. Tell somebody, God said it. That settles it. What else are you looking for God to say? He said, I've already spoken. He said, from the foundation of the world, I've already spoken. Don't you know that when I say it, let there be a light that I was talking about you. He said, I told you to let your light so shine that men might see. Is there anybody here that can tell the devil that back in the beginning, when he said, let there be light, he was talking about me. Is there anybody who can make it personal and say, when God said, let there be light, he was talking about me. Do your head like this and say, when God said, let there be light, he was talking about me, not my sister, not my brother, not my father, but it's me, it's me, Lord, I'm available, it's me, I'm willing, it's me, use me, Lord, for your service, the Bible said, he spoke to the winds and the waves, when the storm was over, he asked them, where is your faith? You say, why? When he asked that, he said, because before we launched out, if you check the record, he had cast the demon out. He said, I already worked a miracle. You've already seen what I can do. Why would you get this far? Just to lose your mind. Why would you come all this way to fall to pieces? Why would you go halfway and give up? The Bible says the race is not given to the swift nor the strong. Is there anybody who can tell God? I'm going all the way, all the way. Why? The Bible says that Jesus, the Lamb of God, was in the garden. The Bible said he talked to his Father. This bitter cup, if you will, it can pass by. But nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will. But thy will be done. Is there anybody who can tell God, not my will, but thy will be done. Whatever you want to do, do it, Lord. Whatever you need to say, say it, Lord. Yeah, I'm available. The Bible said that Jesus walked up a hill called Calvary. The Bible said they led him to the cross. The Bible said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Is there anybody who can tell God from them? They didn't know who they were messing with. Forgive them. They didn't understand what they were doing. But thanks be, thanks be to God that my promise is greater. Somebody shout, my promise is greater. Shout, my promise is greater. Open your mouth. It's greater, it's greater, it's greater.